So hello, hello everyone. This is Luboš Pirkel from CFD Support, and I would like to welcome you to the webinar where we would like to show you a centrifugal fan simulation workflow where we we'll, where we will especially uh, focus on CFD, FEA, and optimization workflow. So I hope all the techniques uh, is working well, and uh, if not, just let us know in the in the in the comments and we will do our best to make everything up and uh, yeah i hope we are on a good way so the webinar is being recorded and its recording will be uh, later made publicly available on our youtube channel and or we can send you the recording so make sure you don't disclose any confidential information uh, there will be a Q&A session dedicated to your questions and our answers, so feel free to ask your questions anytime during the webinar and uh, yeah, let us know what, what, you, what you need to know and uh, what can we do for you. And uh, I think it's, we are set to, to start. Uh, yeah, it's your time, so, so uh, use it to the fullest make yourself yourself comfortable and think about what it is what you need how you would like to improve your simulations how, how, how what, whatever you would like to have and uh, and do and see and we'll do our best to to make you happy and uh, and support you in it so this is webinar speakers so this is this is me uh, i am uh, a coordinator here at, at CFD support. Uh, I do a lot of things uh, to make everything working and uh, together with me on the line is Radek Matsa, our head engineer, senior developer and uh, and uh, also great colleague. So hello Radek, can you hear me? Yeah, hello Lubosh and hello everyone. Yeah, I can hear you. I can see the presentation. So I think everything is going nice and smooth. Perfect. Great. So do you think we can continue? Yes, definitely we can. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's let's get to the action. So here is the webinar agenda. So there will be an introduction. I will I will give uh, an introduction about about what's on the table. Uh, and in the second part, uh, Radek will, will show you a live workflow, uh, a workflow example about the centrifugal fan, how, how you know, what's, what's needed, uh, how it is set up, and what, what are the expected types of results. And he'll put everything together and, uh, and show you things. And after that, there will be a q a session which uh, we will we will pick uh, the most relevant and representative questions we will we will we will answer them right away in the webinar and the rest of the questions will be answered later via email so feel free to ask your questions all the questions will be answered the most relevant questions will be will be answered right away in the in the webinar okay so yeah so i'll i'll, I'll give this Introduction, so CFD Support is the name of our company. It was founded in 2009. We are located uh, in Prague, Czech Republic. And uh, our main focus is, is engineering simulations and virtual prototyping. Namely, it is computational fluid dynamics, uh, finite element analysis and optimization. So, uh, we have we have developed uh, a special simulation environment, which is which is called TCAE, and it's a comprehensive simulation environment that that puts a lot of things together. It's based on open source, so so the on the background, the, all all the little pieces of software is actually open source open source pieces. So. The code is open. It's very uh, transparent and and flexible. I will get to this later in the in the in the presentation. And the I guess the the main message of this software is that it it has it's unique because it has merged 
the benefits of uh, open source, which is which is it's uh, it's uh, open source. It's open. The code is open. It's very transparent and uh, very flexible, and it's uh, uh, it can scale your simulations uh, up up to the up to your resources you you own the process you you, man, you can manage the process on your own you can keep it it's basically yours and yeah and the, the benefits of commercial codes which is which is it has professional technical support it has gra complete, complete graphical interface it has um, the documentation and all, all the resources ready for real professional usage so that's TCAE, and we will we will show the things which are normally normally uh, general things, but but we, we do it in, in TCAE today. Okay, so TCAE is a, is a simulation environment which is pretty comprehensive. It consists of individual standalone software modules. It's very very important. So those are those are like software pieces the modules which which uh, can work individually but of course the, the, they work best in a, in a environment and uh, uh, so far uh, at the moment there are there are modules uh, which which are called tcat tmesh tcfd and tfea and the opt uh, later uh, this year we will we will release uh, a new software module which is called TCAA and it's it's uh, computational aeroacoustics so it will be aimed on acoustics and uh, next year we have we have big big plans with with new module T base and I will speak um, uh, about it later so so yeah TCA consists of software modules they they are individual and they're extremely flexible you can skip them you can use them you can combine them okay so there are a couple of principles we we always uh keep and we always uh, uh which 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 is our vision and and we we really we we really uh develop a TCA uh, under this under this uh, principles so first of all it's flexible so TCA is flexible because everyone can use it according to its his or their skills uh, resources experience and uh, it's extremely flexible so you can you can use individual modules you can modules you can combine combine them with every, almost everything which is which is on the market either with commercial code either with your in-house codes or other open source pieces you can use it really in a way you you like then tca is unlimited it means there are no limitations on number of its users there are no limitations on jobs and cores there are no limitations on hardware installations so it can really scale your workflow your solution to your to the to the fullest uh, according to your resources so it's really another big principle it's uh it's unlimited uh you can keep it you own the process you control the process you manage it you maintain it and it's yours and uh, it's very important in, in fact it's it's a uh, an asset for every individual for every company for every corporation it's very important to control the process to keep it uh, under the roof and and uh, to maintain it and to control it that's very important uh, according to to what we think about about the world uh, then another principle tca is accurate tcae has clear focus it's not for everything or for anything it's uh, aimed on a particular uh, applications especially in turbo machinery field and external aerodynamics so it's definitely not a general purpose code it's a uh, focused code we are obsessed with this accuracy accuracy is everything for us we always do benchmarks and validations uh, all day long to deliver thing which we know how it works and uh, we know for it is and uh, yeah we believe that the the success in virtual prototyping is based on skills experience patience and dedication and uh, that's 
another principle. There are a lot of benchmarks available to prove uh, it's it really is what what we say. And uh, the last major principle is uh, it's automated. So automation brings brings extreme effectivity. TCA is really really automated to the to the uh, as automated as is as it can be. So you can put the data in, pull the data out of it. You you can either use it as a black black box or total high end software where all the options are open. And the beauty of it is that that's it's the user who decides how deep to dive into the into the problem or or not at all. So automation is another very important principle. Uh, we have good technical support. Uh, it's uh, coded in our DNA and in the name of our company, after all. And uh, yeah, there are some some news coming, so I'll, I'll skip this. There's there 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 is Windows and Linux uh, operating systems uh, supported. Uh, the workflow is exactly sa exactly the same in in Windows and in Linux, so it's natively compiled for Windows and for Linux. And uh, it's consistent and it makes um, a quite wide range of, of usability. And uh, yep, it has automated meshing system based on StatX mesh. But of course, you can you can you can load external meshes from third-party software. The, 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 there are a lot of options how to do that, and it, and it's always up to the user. It's very important again because meshing is is very it's it's critical in in virtual prototyping. And TCA has a very good post-processing uh, system. So there are there are reports, special HTML reports in web-responsive web format, where where you can you can you can see the integral results. You can do the visual uh, post-processing in Paraview. I guess uh, Paraview is is big part of of TCA. Actually, it's it's uh, the graphical interface is Paraview. But you can do 100% of workflow in it, and uh, of course, the results are um, stored in uh, in CSV files uh, for for data mining, and uh, there, there are a lot of turbo machinery post processing tools, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So very strong post processing. We always keep moving. We always keep developing TCAE. So so it's it's all there's always one or 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 second or the next version uh, on the way. So the development uh, is users driven. So, so we gather together uh, the requirements from our, our users and uh, uh, implement them over time and, and make, make uh, let's say, uh, one or two major releases a year. And uh, yeah, it's open-ended. It's very important. So so it's flexible right so you can you can employ for example any external code and uh, on any place uh, of the workflow you like uh, to make to make uh, what's what's necessary so it's it's really uh, complex and at the same time open ended uh, environment uh, we sometimes say we we think in like, like two ways. We think in ver vertical development, which means we are adding new applications, new capabilities, new methods. And but we, we are also thinking in in horizontal way, adding uh, new new tools, new new simulation plugins and modules, and we are adding complexity into uh, into it. So it's all the time uh, moving forward. Uh, these are a couple of news uh, which are which are coming. So so we, we released uh, uh, last year we released two versions with uh, quite a lot of new stuff. But but the wheel is is in spin. Uh, this year we will make a major release uh, by by the end of this year, and there will be uh, really again <laughs> again there will be big changes. There will be complete. A code redesign with with new project management of the of, of the of, of the workflow. There will be uh, it will be completely new user experience. Um, there will be new simulation uh, module uh, TCAA for uh, aeroacoustics. There will be a new optimization method called Direct for for optimization simulations for optimization workflows and. Uh, new versions of, of uh, a lot of software pieces, of course. 
I'm sorry. And uh, really a lot of new stuff. We are also already preparing the, the next major release, which will be uh, released in the next year. It, uh, the, it will be another big, big step forward because there will be um, uh, a new uh, software module called TBase, which will which will help uh, the users to to store all the possible results in a large database, which will be ready for for machine learning and and uh, data mining and uh, a really a really big exciting. Uh, changes are, are coming uh, so yep so we're always excited about about the new version and we are a little bit little bit a uh, little bit uh, I would say uh, worrying about the, the, the version uh, it was a year ago because we always are surprised how how, how how much better the new version is yeah but that's that's life uh, there are I have some a couple of application examples in TCA as already mentioned TCA has been originally developed for turbo machinery applications so uh, TCA is, is really good on for example on pump simulation workflows or on or fans which, which is today webinar about it's also really suitable for hydro turbines uh, and compressors and turbochargers, turbine side, compressor side. It's also very good and proven on wind turbines. It's good uh, for external aerodynamics like car bodies or the aircraft. Uh, it's also uh, developed, uh, or the, the latest version is developed for internal flows like, like uh, you know, water valves or hydraulic valves it's been extensively tested for exhaust manifolds and in for intake manifolds and uh, various propellers ship hydrodynamics uh, either with bodies or with or without it's been tested on on projects uh, for for VTOL and on for propellers and also on wind load of of buildings and comfort and heat transfer in in the uh in the human comfort inside inside is inside the room and, and ventilation uh we did a lot of benchmarks in the past we have a couple of them which we can show publicly so uh, we did extensive testing of hydro turbines uh, by the way, a PDF and uh, the the versions are available in the. This is just just the condensate condensated uh, presentation, right? So so there is all, all the details are available about all these projects. So we we did of course benchmarks on all major uh, simulation uh, machines like hydro turbines, uh, centrifugal fan uh, for for propellers uh, and compressors. And uh, of course, we, we tested extensively the parallel scaling potential, which is which is very high, and uh, external aerodynamics compa comparisons with with real measurements in the wind tunnel. So a lot of them are available. We did a couple of optimization studies with our partners. This one is with, we did with cases where the where the bicycle wheel was optimized and uh, the drag of, of the rim itself was reduced by 13% in this particular case. And uh, uh, yeah, so there are a lot of benchmarks we, we did in the past and also also case studies we did with our partners how it can be used, how TCA can be used uh, together uh, in, in, in a joint workflow with, with third party software. And uh, today it's about centrifugal fan. So Radek will, will show you how to set it, what are the, what are the conditions uh, for, the, for the input data, what are, what are the results, what can be done or what's rather not recommend it and my perhaps last point would be uh, last year we have released the, the latest the, the 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 newest software module which is the opt which which does this uh, 
uh, optimization. It's uh, really a uh, game changer in my, in my point of view because uh, optimization is, is a huge trend and it's even much more effective than we expected in the first place. It's, uh, it can change parameters and based on, on um, these parameters, it can, it can suggest the new parameters. So it's, it's a so-called simulation driven optimization and based on the results, a new, new set of, set of parameters is, is suggested and tested and again and again. And this simulation loop is in fact, uh, some, some simulation runs. And uh, based on the optimization function, it's it's decided what what design is better or and, and which one is, is is worse. And this is in this iterative process, you you at the, at the end you end up with with the most, for example, efficient or the most the, the best possible design you, you you are looking for. And the the point is, uh, this is this is not intuitive process at all. So it has to be a machine which does the simulation and, and the optimization, and uh, we, we definitely have to leave it on on the simulation algorithm because we can't ever we can't ever imagine the, the like five di dimensional space and and make any optimization in it. It's it's simply impossible. So optimization is is big thing. Uh, all the years before we did it, uh, it was just a trial and error method. Now now it's now it's much more. A much more sophisticated and really it really has the results okay so this is the introduction so radek knock knock again can you are you still here are you still with us yes i'm still here yeah <laughs> great great so uh you know what i will switch the presentation over to you and uh it's okay, up to perfect. you now you can see your okay, screen okay thank you Lubosh. okay perfect thank you all right, all right. So I will directly jump into the into the live example. So I will I will will go through the whole workflow from the very beginning up to the end, up to up to the seeing the results. Just uh, just to introduce the case again, as already Lubosh mentioned, we we will be dealing with the centrifugal fan. So you can go to our web page cfdsupport.com where you can find this case study. You can ask for the trial version, you can download the case and you can really play by your own to test the software before before you buy it, for example. So everything is open and everything you can test by your own. Okay, so this is today's case. It's a, it's a geometry of a centrifugal fan. For this particular geometry, we have developed a parametric model. So as for the each optimization run, if you would like to optimize the geometry itself, so you need to have you need to have the the uh, parametric model. Usually, our our clients uses some external software which which for, which offers the parametrization of the of the geometry, or they have their in-house codes. So TCA is open for all of these options and everything can be incorporated into the into the into the into the whole workflow and to the optimization loop so basically what what you need at the beginning is the input geometry yeah, for for example in this case this parametric model which is implemented in salome for example can give you the geometry in stls for every for each parametric variation. And then these STLs are used for generating the mesh. The workflow can be really general. So you can you can connect it with an external meshing tool or basic, uh, basically all the options are available. So in this case, this geometry builder generates the STLs and these STLs is then used for, for the meshing, then for the si simulation run, both CFD or FEA. And then this is put into the whole loop for the T opt. So it's optimized and each geometry variation is, ge is generated. Results are evaluated and then put back to the optimization algorithm, which decides what, what will be the next step. Okay, so I will I will directly open the workflow. So I will start with the preset case just to speed up the process. So I will I will 
comment all the setup and all the all the parts which must be done during the preparing the workflow. So this is the graphical user inter user interface. I, I will not introduce all all the parts of the graphical user interface. You can find it in many of our previous webinars. So basically, what we need to do at the beginning is to is to prepare the input geometry is to create the mesh because without the mesh we have no simulation right so the first module there are several modules yeah so first one is let's let's say the composer one is the t mesh which process the the computational mesh tcfd does the cfd simulation tfea module do the structural analysis or model analysis and finally the t opt can 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 manage the the optimization loop based on the modules we we will set we will set here so first one is the t mesh so each module has its own parameters to be set you can you can use it as a wizard so basically you get you, you go from up to down and go through each each parameters to be set and you can basically go step by step to, to prepare the workflow so let's say we, we will start with setting the setting the mesh for the cfd simulation so here first we will start with the cfd mesh output afterwards i will show you how to for example how to set up also the fea mesh but let's start with the cfd cfd mesh so here is for example the parameter scale factor which 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 gives the information to the to the meshing solver what are the source units of of the stls or of the external geometry or external mesh because the solver needs to know what are the units and these units have to should be scaled into the si unit so to the meters so in this case the source geometry the stl geometry is already in meters so we will tell the solver by setting the scale factor to one meters if it will be in millimeters you can set okay the source source units are millimeters for example each part because the workflow is always we would like to keep it as general as possible so each module has its own scripting it's python scripting using which you can really uh, you can uh, you can tune the workflow to your needs so you can put in as any specific part of the workflow while the scripting so i will not go much into the details but in general almost everything is possible by the scripting feature then we go particularly to the setting the setting the simulation so here we first we said let's say the rotate rotating uh, rotation reference frame which means we set the axis of rotation there are usually or usually there are two frames one static and one rotating why we, we need to set a, a transformation for static let's say static parts it's for for example if you have some some segment parts so which which includes some peri periodicity so these periodicities needs to know the transformation right so so this is the reason why also static frames has, needs to know what is the axis of rotation or axis of transformation so we have two and in this case the rotation rotational axis goes along the y y direction and goes through the origin zero 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 then uh, for defining the the computational domain we use so-called uh, component thinking so each each part is set as a component for turbine machinery the rule is pretty simple so we need to distinguish which part is rotating and which part is static so in this case so if i click to the cfd geometry i will just make some transparency to see really the whole whole geometry so we have three components this inlet diffuser or inlet pipe then the rotor and the rotor itself and and the third component is is the volute 
So therefore we have three components. In this case, we use the directory with STLs. So then for generation for mesh generation, the snappy hex mesh is used. Or for those who has any external meshing tool, you can you can create it in the external meshing tool and and export it as Fluent mesh, CGNM, CGNS mesh, or OpenFoam mesh, and then load the resulting mesh directly here. But today we will be playing with the with the STLs. So for for the STLs, you usually put all the STLs into the one folder, or STLs of single component you you put into the single folder, and then you will locate the folder with the with the with the geometry. In our case, we have it here in this geometry builder and in the STL STL folder. Afterwards, you 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 put or you define the directory with STLs. All the STLs are loaded into this table, and you can use them you can use them to define the component the component parts component geometry. So let's start with the component one. Here, here we have the uh, the table of the STLs, and here in this case we have three STLs which define the inlet, one one part which defines the wall, and the second and the third part which defines the outlet interface. Yes, yeah, so each component has to be has has to be connected to to its neighbor, and this connection has to be let's say perfect so so the outlet of this let's say outlet of of this inlet part has to fit perfectly to the to the inlet to the rotor part and yeah, so basically this this interface should be the same as for as for the interface to the rotor yeah so if i go to the component 2 and it's the suction interface so you can see that this interface is really the same yeah so this is the this is the rule to connect to connect the components perfectly back to component one there is also one important parameter reference frame so here we are saying if this part belongs to the rotating part if it belongs to the rotor or not then internally the solver prescribed the proper uh, let's say proper algorithm how to treat rotating rotating domains. All right. So here, for each STL, we uh, we en enable it by the by the setting of the proper patch patch type. I think it's pretty straightforward. So there are several types for the walls, which somehow distinguish which part of the turbo machinery it is. So we have hub, shroud, blades, and so on. For standard walls, then there are there are physical types like inlet and outlet, which defines really the physical inlet and physical outlet to the domain. And there are several parts which which define the interfaces. In, if you know the direction of the flow, we can particularly set that the outlet of the suction pipe is outlet interface because the flow goes out. If the interface is like some open Open box or something like that, where where there is no not not clear if the flow goes out or or in, or there are places where it goes out and where it goes in. So then we can set it as free stream interface. But in this case, we are sure that the flow goes out here in this interface. Yeah, the similar component too. For this component, we have. We have to assign these, let's say, these six six parts. So we have parts which distinguish the parts of the blade. So we have the part with, which defines the leading edge of the impeller, pressure side, suction side, and trailing edge. It's not compulsory, but but if you split, let's say, if you are able to split this part into the more pieces, then you uh, you are more free to define the refinement of the mesh locally on the blade. What does it mean? Basically, this is the level of refinement. Again, the, the details can be found in our previous webinars. 
but the machine works in the following way that there is let's say the background mesh size so this is the largest cell in the domain which is defined here and then these levels mean how, how many times this cell is refined at the given part of the geometry. So because the leading edge and trailing edge are highly curved areas, so we need to have finer refinement on these parts to have a nice and smooth mesh. So we need to define more, more levels, high level of refinement to get finer meshes. And on more straight planes or straight, straight surfaces, we can set a lower level of refinement. There are always two, minimum and maximum. So if we set different levels for the minimum and maximum, then the algorithm decides which level to put on, on the different parts of, of the given part. And it is dependent on, this is dependent on the curvature or on the local, local curvature. So for highly curved parts, the algorithm sets the high level of refinement and on the flat parts it set it sets the low level of refinement. Then there are another columns which can be filled. So you can enable the inflation layer, boundary layer, so you can set as many layers as, as you want. Basically what Snappy Hex Mesh can add is up to let's say nine or ten level uh, layers is, is the maximum yeah, to be to be put. To the to the boundaries, and then there is a gap refinement level, which can allows you to mesh locally some closer parts between two two geometries. Yeah, so for example, if between the shroud and here in the leading edge, there is small gaps, yeah, because the leading edge starts somewhere here and there are close parts between the shroud and and the leading edges so to improve the the meshes locally here you can set this gap refinement level which allows uh, or which enables the meshing solver to to put more cells in between these two parts yeah and you can do it for any couple of of boundaries all right, and the last component is the volute. So again, we have several parts to define. So for example, interface between rotor and stator. The, let's say, outside part of the, of the rotor, rotor hub. And for example, yeah, some, some local, local parts of the, of the solid, which belongs, which boundaries belongs to the, to the sp spiral part. All right, and for each component, as I already mentioned, you need to set the background mesh size. So it depends how it is the overall, let's say, overall refinement of your mesh. So this is the largest cell in the domain which will be generated. Then you can also yeah, visualize what what is, let's say, the topology or, or the sizing compared to your current geometry. So you can, when you are really playing for the very first time with your geometry, so it's very useful thing to 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 have some some image of of the refinement of the of the of the mesh. Then there is an internal point. Uh, internal point basically defines a part of the geometry which will be meshed. Yeah, so for the external IRO, we would put we would put it outside of our geometry. Let's say if we are going to simulate a internal internal flow then we would like to put this point inside our object in our component uh, we can also define a cylindrical background mesh for some situation it can be helpful you, we can somehow rotate the background mesh yeah so we can really somehow align align the background mesh better with our geometry so there are many other tools to be play with and I think this is the most important parameters. So when everything is okay, maybe what I didn't mention is that we are defining the reference frame for each component and also for each geometry part. So the geometry part, which is physically rotating has to be set as rotating and the part which is static, like for example, in the, in, 
in the bolid part, so the spiral is definitely static, so it's set as static. But for example, the out, outer part of the of the hub of the wheel should be defined as rotating. Yeah, and this can be so rotating part can be also set in the non-rotating component, but needs to have this rotational symmetry yeah, to be to be to be able to set it. If if the part hasn't this, let's say, this rota rotational symmetry, like, I, can, I don't know, you can imagine that, for example, that on the outer side of the hub, there are some, some ribs, yeah, some melted parts to be more more, more stiff, then it, it's not, not uh, rotational symmetric anymore, and this part should be included into the rotating part, yeah, so the interface should be, for example, prolonged to be, up to the boundary of the spiller yeah, and, and these ribs, if there are some, should be uh, included into the whole rotating component. Yeah, so it depends on the on, on the case, of course. Then maybe here, I, I can mention in the advanced meshing option, so here you can find almost all the, all the SnapX mesh parameters and in the, for example, layer mesh for each component, you can set the parameters of the boundary layers. Yeah, so we can set the sizing of the first or final layer, the thickness, and so on. Yeah, so basically you can go through it and and play with the parameters. But most of them are, let's say, set to the best practice use. So they many of them don't need any any interference with the user. And let's say the last menu is the parallel, parallel run, so you can set how many cores will be used for gen, gener, generating the mesh. So, for example, in my case, because I'm on my laptop now, so I have here eight physical cores, so I can set eight cores to be used for for the meshing. Okay, so this this was the CFD mesh. So maybe. When we are in the T-Mesh module, I can enable also to set the FEA mesh. So we can also set set up the FEA mesh if you would like to do the FEA analysis. So now I have new men menu for FEA mesh. So maybe I can get rid of the CFD geometry and I can enable the FEA geometry. So here we have the mesh, meshing setting. So in this way, it's much, much easier to set the mesh parameters. So for this, again, I will be using the STL geometry. So I need a solid geometry of the of the impeller. So I will go to the STL and I will go to the particular STL, which defines me the solid of the wheel. So I will click apply. And now you can see this is the solid geometry of the wheel. Yeah, you can also basically you can play as you want with the GUI. Yeah, you can visualize what you want. So now for now, I would like to see just the FEA geometry. And here there are just few parameters to be set. So for for this case, for the FEA mesh, the net gen is used, or or also we can use uh, ready 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 mesh net gen or in Abacus format. But here we will use the steel geometry. You can set the parameters of this tetrahedral meshes generated by the netgen. So, okay, let's stick with the medium. And this is the maximum and minimum sizing of the of the tetrahedra. So I think that the thickness of this, let's say, of this solid is one centimeter, I think. So let's say I will set the maximum number of maximum sizing of of the tetrahedra will be one centimeter and the minimum will be let's say two millimeters here you can set some advanced machine options uh, related to the, to the net gen parameters yes yeah, so we can also play here with with the parameters of the net gen and that's all yeah so this is much simpler than to define the cfd cfd mesh all right so this this was the meshing yeah, and when, when, for example, when you are playing for the very first time with the case, you can go to the to the to this first item, which is called the manager. And when, because everything is preset for the TOP, and if, if there is no TOP, you can directly generate the mesh, 
step by step, check the mesh, remesh if something is set in in not proper way and go iterate up to you are satisfied with the with the mesh structure or mesh quality. Okay, so this was the more this was the meshing and now we will go for the setting the TCFD. So again, you can use it as a wizard. So you can from up to the bottom and go step by step over each parameter and set it following your following your project, following your your needs. So in general, there is a simulation type. As Lubos already mentioned, the simulation or our workflow is always focused. So because we are simulating funds, so there is a simulation type specific for the funds. And by setting this, <clears throat> you will you will you will see some specific parameters for the fund and also the the final report and and <clears throat> evaluation of the results will be focused on fund parameters. So let's go for the physics. In the time management, we can set if we would like to simulate uh, simulate uh, the our, our geometry in steady state or in transient. So here for the optimization, we will use the steady state because it, here it, it gives very good results and it takes much less time than for the transient. So we, we are now focusing just on the integral values, not any local patterns of the flow. So we can stick with the steady state. <clears throat> here for each optimization run we would like to simulate only one point for example we are looking for the best efficiency point and and it's parametrical variation for the best efficiency point for our for our project so we one point is enough to be simulated because the flow speed is low and this is a radial fun with with low low pressurized let's say or low pressure difference so we can stick with the incompressible physics which gives us much faster faster results we can set the, the fluid parameters in the multi physics we don't need to set any specific multi physics but there are some some features available for you turbulence the choice number one is usually k omega sst or depending on the future experience or future on the user's experience and in rotational reference frame, we set the uh, <clears throat> the angular speed of the of the wheel. Here, the right hand rule holds. So, because our axis goes in the y direction, so if if the right hand thumb points the axis of the rotation, then the cross fingers shows the positive direction of the flow so this is the positive direction of the flow uh, of the rotation but we we need it to rotate in this way yeah so therefore there is the negative sign for the rotation speed in the simulation we <clears throat> we can set the number of processors we can set the numerical order of the solver first is more robust but le but less accurate second is less Less robust but more accurate. So it depending on the let's say flow regime, geometry, mesh, and so on. So in this case, because it's already already tuned, so second order is okay. In the runtime runtime evaluated quantities, <clears throat> we can set the averaging window for steady state or both for steady state and transient simulation. It's very important. So we would like to look for the average solution. Yeah. So because our simulation took, uh, I think, 3,000 iteration, and we would like to be sure that we get an average and robust solution because it's used for optimization. So we usually <clears throat> set some high averaging window to really get averaged solution, which is which is robust for each geometry variation. Uh, for the efficiency, so we here we set which parts should be used for evaluated efficiency so inlet and outlet patches for evaluated pressure differences and torque patches for evaluated for evaluation evalu evaluating torques 
because for fun there is specific parameter which is the wheel diameter so in this case it's 1.1 meters additionally if if the user is is interested in seeing forces on some particle part of the geometry or probes which means the, the exact value of some quantity in the particle position in the domain you can you can set it here so you can set which fields to follow and which coordinates <clears throat> which coordinates um, follows the point in the domain so we don't need it for now you can also compute some pre pressure coefficient on on the given parts of the of the domain if you if you are interested and so on in the convergence check you can set the criterion to to end the simulation for example before the maximum iterations are reached so here we are looking for the average efficiency if the tolerance is less than what is it is 5 less than 5 0 0.005 basically <laughs> then in the controls these are parameters which are which are uh, relevant for the solver itself so here are some under relaxation factors <clears throat> threshold for the maximum and minimum values and linear solvers solver tolerances and again also tcfd module can be can be scripted so you can put your sum of any any you can put any modification into the workflow of the tcfd run then boundary conditions i think they are pretty straightforward so here you set the boundary condition at the inlet and at the outlet so here this fan will be optimized for for this volumetric flow rate which corresponds to 10 cubic meters per second you set some uh, initial initial turbulence quantities at the outlet we are using fixed pressure fixed mean pressure so averaged pressure at the, at the outlet at the walls implicitly all the walls are set as a no slip wall with the standard wall functions at the interfaces you have two options you can simulate it as frozen rotor with ami uh, AMI uh, um, communication at the interfaces or as a mixing plane usually for the segment segment cases so in this case the frozen rotor is <clears throat> optimal and you set the initial conditions for the simulations then as a post-processing you can play with the with the report so you can see which quantities you would like to see in the report can, for example see all of the available quantities what they are what are your preferences for the units you can also set some uh, automatically evaluated quantities or uh, quantities yeah, yeah or visualization like blade to blade view or meridian meridian average you can go for samples so you can explicitly store the values on the some on the particle part of the geometry and the particular fields for example for later usage and you can also store the results in different formats like in cgns or <clears throat> you can write the surface quantities to be used for example for additional post-processing in external programs for example so this was tcfd then if you would like to simulate also the FEA analysis, we can go here and enable FEA analysis. So I can enable this module FEA. Afterwards, I will see the new item here. And quickly we can set the FEA analysis, which is much, much simpler again compared to the CFD analysis. <clears throat> so here for the radial fan, but we are we'll, what we should be interested in is could be the model analysis and we also would like to incorporate the forces <clears throat> from the CFD simulation yeah so we can enable a fluid structure interaction we can choose which patches should be mapped so basically all the parts which belongs to the impeller from both sides yeah of the impeller so all these patches will be mapped 
we would like to map the forces, yeah, and we would like to use the relative pressure for computing forces, which is the safest option for 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 modeling the transformations properly. All right, we can include also the gravity, but for this case, it's not not necessary. And in the model analysis, we can we can set how many eigenfrequencies we would like to get. Yeah, from the model analysis, so let's say five could be a standard. In the solver, again, we can we can set how many how many processors to be used, which linear algebra to be used. So we can start with the direct and the second element order scheme. For larger deformation, we can set the nonlinear equation, which are more accurate for larger larger. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, deformations, which is not this case, and again the case can be scripted, or the FEA module can be scripted. <clears throat> then we can set standard material properties, so we can keep it as a steel, or you can you can set your own parameters of your of your material. Here boundary conditions, so usually we need to set some <clears throat> some region of zero displacement if we we would like to use this uh, model analysis and <clears throat> and uh, and deformation analysis. So, for example, we can fix it with the cylinder, or we can fix it with the particular STL. Yeah. So, for example, we can fix it with the wall. So, in this case, I will use, let's say, the cylinder uh, <clears throat> axis will be the same as axis of of the rotation which is y and okay radius we can set which somehow which corresponds to the let's say to the shaft to to which it is fixed right so we would like to set let's say okay the part on the hub so maybe i will move it a little bit to the to the right at, at this current view yeah to cut off to cut off our solid geometry, so now all the points which are within the within the cylinder on the on our wheel <clears throat> will be set as fixed. And I think that's all. If we if we do some compressible cases with the temperature, we can also simulate the temperature temperature analysis. And again, in the post-processing part, we can set our favorite units, and for example, we can extract surface data, resulting surface data of the deformation to the to the explicit files for the later usage. <clears throat> okay, and when everything is everything is fine, we are satisfied with the result for the particular simulation for each point because it must be tuned because the T-opt cannot be run directly without any any analysis of your results and so on. So if you are satisfied both with the CFD results, with the FEA results, you can go and enable optimization loop <clears throat> and how, how it can be reset. So we can take the T-opt module and set some some parameters for example operation mode so you can set some explicit doe analysis so you, so you will pick you will know what what the parameters values are in advance or you can directly go for the optimization so to find the best best variation of of the parameters method you can use external method so you can connect for example any external code like Dakota or something something else or we have some built-in algorithms which, which we are extending so in the next <clears throat> release there will be new algorithm for for the for the optimization so now there is golden section search for example here you can you, you are saying if if you would like to regenerate the mesh so for example for some optimization where we do not very vary and we do not worry the the parameters of the of the geometry itself so we can say explicitly that i i don't want to remesh remesh the mesh every step <clears throat> but this is not the case so the let's say the algorithm behind can 
automatically distinguish if the mesh should be regenerated, but in some cases, maybe you should tell it explicitly. But in this case, it's okay. Initialization script. So this is script which, which connects, for example, external tool or external geometry, geometry builder with, with the T-opt. So this, this is important uh, script. Maybe I will describe it later on. This is basically script which runs external external commands, tools to, for example, generate a new set of new 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 set of uh, <coughs> geometry for the for the optimization run. Then for the optimization itself, we can set the maximum runs runs to be <laughs> to be run a number of parameters. So these parameters can be any parameter. It can be, for example, the flow rate or it can be parameters which belongs to the geometry builder, which is this case. So here we have, for example, far five parameters because they, they, these are external parameters. It belongs to the external software geometry builder, for example, in, in this case in Salome. So the kind is custom. For each, you define your the name of the parameter and the type. For example, a number of blades is integer, but the blade radius, for example, is a real number. Type of the space from which it's taken, how, or the <clears throat> the function of of the parameter, how it behaves. So, for example, standard is linear space, but you can go for log space or explicit list. Then you set the maximum and the minimum number to be varied for each parameter. Number of samples. So it means the first first set of variation is done like a DOE. Yeah, so it runs, it varies two samples for each parameter to get, so let's say to get the boundaries of the parametric space, and then it starts the optimization itself from, <coughs> from this result. Group ID, it's let's say some advanced parameter. It can, it can couple couple any parameter. So for example, some parameter are dependent, so we can give a non-zero group ID to them and then it varies together. So with the same step and so on, for example. Then there are tracked quantities. So these tracked quantities, it's, it's some part of the goal function or or it's, it's uh, interesting values for, for the user. So for example, here we are, we would like to focus on the efficiency, on the power and on the, on the uh, total pressure difference. And these, these are built-in quantities and you can list them basically all the values which, which, uh, which CFD simulation or TCFD module gives for you. So you can take, take them for the, for, for following them for the T opt or you can take them to define the optimization function. So here the optimization function is just the efficiency. We would like to optimize for the maximum and you would like to say what is the absolute or relative tolerance for the optimization to stop the optimizing. So if it can't find any point which is which is better in efficiency less than 0.5%, then it will stop the optimization loop. And basically that's all. And afterwards you can you can run the optimization loop and everything is running. So maybe I will go a little bit through the initial <coughs> initialization script. So now we can see that for this uh, parameter variation, it runs the it runs the it runs the script, which the, it runs the uh, this <clears throat> geometry builder, and now it generates the STLs, and afterwards it will start the CV run meshing and so on. Maybe I will quickly go for the for this script. So here the initialization script written in Python, and it will include several lines which basically takes the parameters from the topt which are stored in this list. So there's parameters with topt name and uh, uh, and the names of the parameters and it is it is put into this geometry builder parameters which is the input 
input file for the for the <coughs> for the geometry builder uh, which is here and it it basically sets the parameters for the geometry variation and this is taken by the geometry builder it creates as the stls and then the loop is run so it runs the tmesh tcfd topt and so on and yeah, maybe i can just quickly go here to the to the graph so on our web pages if you go to the topt so this is the yeah this is the chart which shows what we what we what we are doing now so this is a standard workflow so we are starting the tcae it runs the tmesh tcfd T, tfua possibly and then it ends but when we when the top is enabled it always goes through the optimization loop it generates a new geometry variation for example then it goes goes through the standard tmesh tcfd tfua <clears throat> it evaluates the results based on our definition the results are, are sent to the topt to the optimization if the optimization conver is converged then everything is done if not it goes again to the loop generate the new geometry and so on and so on until we got our best best efficiency results in our case so finally maybe i can show you the results how, how the simulation looks at the end so i have here because i have simulated on my laptop so i just put two two parameters with 30 variations so i can reopen this project so now the results are loading into the gui <clears throat> okay i can click apply and then for example here in the topt browser we can we can visualize the, the geometry so for example let's say the last one here we can load the, the data okay it's still loading okay apply and maybe my laptop is a little bit overwhelmed okay it's now okay so it it always shows the all the variation which were simulated and also i think there should be also the data <clears throat> yeah the data of each run yeah so this this is the run 30 and we can see the optimization function value and all the other parameters and when okay we, maybe i can go for the wireframe just to see the variation of the geometry then I can choose, for example, variation two. So it reloads the data for this particular run. You can see, yeah, you can you could see the change changes in the geometry, and here are the new values. Or we can follow the topt topt uh, HTML report. So I can maybe I can enlarge this section view with all the with all the results, the table with all the variation, you can follow the plot of the efficiency for each variation and so on. Yes, yeah, so we can see the best efficiency point, optimization function, optimization function based on our two parameters and so on. Yeah, so you can analyze the case as you want you can go for example back to each simulation and you can visualize the results you can visualize the cfd results or fea fea results and so on yeah so basically at the end you can put everything all the data from all the simulations both in html as compressed compressed data or for each each project run and you can see and you can see uh, the particle data flow analysis you can analyze the flow for each variation or for the particular variation and so on
<clears throat> usually for the best efficiency point. And every, everything of these visualizations can be done. Okay, so maybe it's time to go back to Lubosch. Maybe Lubosch will add some information or maybe something something no, more. No, no, no. Thank, thank you, yeah. Radek. Thank you, thank you very much for your for your part. It was very informative, and also I understand it's, it's difficult because there is a lot of pieces and a little yeah, right. <laughs> to 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 talk about. So thank you. It was it was good. So we at least had a good like overview and summary of what's possible. Um, yeah, it's it's great. So I think we can. I can, I guess we can we can go ahead a little bit. Mm -hmm. So now it's time for Q and A. We are a little bit over time, so let's 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 take a look. I haven't seen so far many questions, so it will be maybe it will be even quicker than we, than we thought. Uh, yeah, so I would I I would like to ask the audience. There's quite a lot of people here, so I would like to ask the audience to ask your questions, and uh, let's give it a couple of uh, yeah seconds. And mm -hmm. if there will be questions which may help others, we will answer them right away. And uh, otherwise, we would we would conclude. So, yeah. So please ask. Um, yeah. And uh, maybe yeah. It's it's a lot of information, especially maybe maybe I would I would just add that I said mm -hmm. it already, but I, I would just add that uh, optimization is, is uh, quite uh, for, for those who, who, who know CFD already, right? It's, uh, you, you have, to, have to know your CFD model first. Uh, you have to trust it. You have to believe in the results. And then, then, it, then it definitely, that after that, it makes sense to, to, to go with, with the optimization. Optimization is definitely a big thing, but we, we always uh, recommend to to know what you do with with standard workflow in the first place so i'm just by the way quicking um uh, quickly checking uh, with uh, for for the for the questions we haven't many uh, questions here uh, D david is asking uh, can this package work with freecat of course yes sure uh, uh, actually, yeah, <laughs> good question. Yes, of course it can in general. It can work with this FreeCAD, but as far as we know, uh, FreeCAD is not very good at uh, exporting individual STL files uh, because we, we we know it can da it can do like one one big STL of everything, which is which is not uh, the best. It's not appropriate input for for CFD, but if if you can script it, then yes, it's it's the same uh, because uh, our system does not care what what the where, where the input comes from. It can run the scripts, it can run everything in the background in in Bash or in in Python. So it definitely any software is 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 compatible with TCAE because. We can we can run scripts. We can we can. It's it's very flexible. So even for users, and yeah, FreeCAD is is a good one. People people use it because it's it has good support for for parametric uh, operations. Uh, but especially for for technical machinery, we have seen uh, Salome a little bit uh, more 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 suited for for this, better suited. Uh, that's. Uh, uh, yeah, that's, that's that's as far as I can say. Uh, yeah, Marco is asking. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so we will we will send you answer this. Yeah, the, the yeah the cost and etc. Uh, we will answer this uh, uh, in separate email. The, the the pricing is 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 public. That's that's okay. So no not 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 a big deal. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, David is asking. Maybe, maybe this one is good to good question. David is asking, how does uh, this full version compare to to the free version of CFD? It's uh, it, this this shall be explained. So, 
uh, it's it's based on open source. Open source is for free and uh, and and at any scale, and you can do whatever with it. Our software is is paid because we have added the the extra layer, which is the graphical interface, as you can see uh, in the in the webinar. Radek, uh, like what, what he showed, is is the latest mm -hmm. layer, which is which is the graphical interface, I can say, and the also the automation tool. And that's uh, that's not open source. That's proprietary because uh, if we want to want to survive in the market, we have to ask for for we have to ask money for something. And which that's the the graphical interface basically. So the uh, the free version is open foam. We we have uh, added a couple of uh, capabilities and and functions and everything. That's that's for free. That's the the source code is open and and it's it's publicly available in any of our of 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 any compilation so it's available for everyone but what's what's based on open source is for free for everyone but the the, the graphical interface uh, where you you set the workflow and by the way it's the most important part of it uh, for 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 normal people so that's that's what what's paid for but it's not that much and it's definitely much much cheaper than than what you are used to in the market and you you own the process it's very very important with tcae you you get it most of people get the perpetual version they can keep it they can uh, have it and they can do whatever they want they can extend it etc etc et and you control the process you can maintain it you own it it's a big difference from leasing licenses or some 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 cloud adventures uh, you can you can use it maintain it you can send it anywhere you can of course you can send it on the cloud but you don't rely on some Thing which exists today and won't exist tomorrow. Okay, so that that's this, and uh, I can't see any 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 relevant question, any other. So so let's continue. So uh, well well well. Uh, actually, I need to. I, I'll I'll take back. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so right right. I'm, I'm going to show my screen. Back. Yeah. So yeah yeah yeah. So this this is Q and A. Uh, we are yeah. yeah yeah yeah. So we are so long. So I'll I'll conclude. So yeah, these are a few of those who already share our visions with us, and uh, any one of you is welcome. So feel free to get in touch, and uh, we'll definitely do our best to to support you. And this will be it for today. So I would like to thank you for your attention and uh, let us know how, how we can help you. And we will definitely do our best to to, to support you in your process. Feel free to get in touch. Uh, Radek, uh, any last comment? Yeah, thank you very much. I don't want to I don't want to delay <laughs> and the webinar even more. So thank you for watching. And if you have any question or if you would like to discuss anything with us, just contact us and we will be glad to have a discussion with you. Yeah. So thank you. Okay. Have a nice day and bye bye. Okay. Thank you, Radek. And yeah, 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 yeah. This will be it. So thank you for your attention. We we'll leave you with this exactly moment. And yeah, thank you. Bye bye.